this is CPC walk around question. This is test two. This is a question that throws a lot of people. Whose vehicle control during break? That would be correct. Oh, it's all of the above. Yeah, it can save fuel because of fast brake release. There's no brake drag. It improves stability and reaction during braking. So it's all of the above. So you were correct in all the selected these, but the answer was all of the above. Adjusted to the for starting a journey in order to ensure your own comfort and safety. That's all of them. <coughs> How would you slow down on downhill stretches? That's some word, isn't it? service brake failure, your service brake being your foot brake. You do not pump the brakes. Okay, yes, you can brake. I don't think you'd be shouting Geronimo, <laughs> turn on the indicators, but you don't pump the brakes, okay? Oh, yeah. Just uses up a little bit of air you have left. This is a funny worded question. What types of practices will ensure the optimum use of vehicle inertia? It's the way that question is laid out that confuses people. Basically, it's just asking how to use the, the weight of the vehicle to your advantage. It's all about anticipation, forward planning. I don't think speeding is ever a good idea, is it? No. That word is made up, so we'll have to change that. But yeah, momentum actually is correct. You'd use your momentum and your anticipation. I have to go in and correct that question, okay? 
It's all about forward planning, anticipation, timely braking, timely acceleration. Steps you follow in order to ensure your vehicle is secure and safe. How would you save fuel? How would you bring about a decrease in fuel consumption? Coasting. Coasting is never a correct answer, okay? You can't have a vehicle of 16, 19, 20 whatever tons it is rolling along not being held back by anything that is just dangerous and it's just totally unacceptable okay coasting is never the correct answer to anything what are the advantages associated with the use of the retarder or the endurance brake same thing What posture movement or activity is going to result in a risk of injury to you? That is the easiest question there. Standing up, sitting down, reaching, stretching, stooping, pulling, pushing, lifting, loading, unloading, getting into the cab, getting off the cab. Any activity or posture or position really could potentially injure you, couldn't it? So it's all of the above. It's a multi-select. With a high sided vehicle and a high load, what would adversely affect the center of gravity of your vehicle? Yes, again, you're correct. Running over the curb. Wind forces would definitely affect a high sided vehicle, and the camber of the road would definitely affect a, a high sided vehicle. So the answer is all of the above. Hi guys, thanks for liking and subscribing to my channel, and liking my videos helps other people find them.